So that's all the Daenerys Drogo stuff, but we knew that already from Martin's comments and interviews. The the last big change from the unaired pilot to the main series version of Game of Thrones is that the pilot script's version of the Jamie Cersei sex scene at the end when Bran finds them has exactly the same problems as their Great Sept of Baylor sex scene in Season 4. That it is totally unclear and it unintentionally looks like rape. Now, because I'm an administrator on the Game of Thrones wiki and there's no maybe when it comes to rape, it, it accidentally looked like rape because of they screwed up. And this isn't blaming people who thought it looked like that. It's you screwed up so badly you made a consensual sex scene look like rape. And rather than apologize, they just didn't give interviews for a full year. And because there's no be- there's no maybe when it comes to rape for the wiki, I had to research this, ultimately made this little disclaimer page going, these are all of our cited actor and director statements that they didn't intend it that way in universe. This is their fault, not blaming the audience. And it's as simple as that. And from that, I made an hour-long documentary on this for YouTube purposes to spread the information, what happened in the Jamie Searcy Great Sept sex scene. So I'm going to link that at the end of this and in the, in the description box below. Please check that out. It gives all the evidence. This is comical, comically inept, and insulting of how they're treating the audience. Just, we're at the point where we don't need to do damage control that the actors and director have repeatedly stated that the season four scene was not intended as rape. The camera work is just utterly awful and incompetent. Lena Headey has said this on video. Nikolai Coster waldo has had to say this repeatedly on video in different interviews. I link them in my other documentary and you can find them. The worst case was for season seven, there was this big issue of Time Magazine talking to all the cast and crew, and in the same issue that he was repeating his polite defense of, this wasn't in the script, therefore I didn't play it as such, you know, I didn't play it as rape, Lena didn't either, and, you know, I think it's just unusual camera work, not that I'm trying to blame the audience. Benioff and Weiss, in the same issue, talked about it and were utterly flippant and dismissive and blaming the audience of, oh yeah, what kind of idiot thought it looked like that? Turns out Nikolai himself, because Nikolai also said in that, you know, when we were filming it, because there's points in it where Lena pulls his head in to kiss him, shoves her hand down his pants and stuff, he said, you know, I'm worried, he went up to the director and said, I'm worried that the camera work in this is confusing, and because she's shouting, no, 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 people might see us, we're in a public place, this might come off as rape. Are you sure the camera work makes it clear that it's not? And this is all public interview. Nikolai said this in a public interview, that I warned the director as we were filming it, and he basically said, shut up and read your lines, which is what they tell him all the time now. You know, you do your job, I'll do mine. This is fine. Just, it truly did not occur to them that we are presenting a scene of a woman shouting no and not making it clear that she's leaning in to kiss him. Here's the screenshot of this. In my full documentary, I, the part of it was I made freeze frame grabs that you cannot see this live when watching it, that it's for a fraction of a second, that it's proving what the actor said, that, yeah, I was leaning in to kiss... Uh, Nikolai consensually. It's supposed to look like I'm leaning into it. Yeah, it does, and the camera will cut away a fraction of a second later. To They're slinking down one side of the altar. It'll cut to the opposite angle to show the back of her head from the uh, obscured by the altar that you can't see anything. So yes, I do believe the actors are physically playing it that way on set that day, and it's just terribly filmed. This is proven by all of their statements, even even Benioff and Weiss, eventually by season seven, were saying, what idiot thought this looked like rape, when no one who had our screeners thought that, when, yes, many people who got screeners, including Westeros.org, were warning that something weird was going to happen in episode three of that season. Many people were worried about it, any measurable th- review sites and magazines thought, wait, what is this? 
And by season seven, they were they were careful not to say it doesn't look like rape, but mocking people who thought it did, whereas the, the actor had to say this. Just, this is their own incompetence. And ultimately, this is a broader extension of what I was saying before, that the reason the pilot failed is the exposition was god-awful. Like, basic things were not clear in it, because they kept saying it in the scene descriptions, but not in dialogue. That after they finished screening it, uh, the screenwriters they showed it to said, this is unwatchable, it isn't even clear that Cersei is Jamie's sister. And they went, what do you mean? And they went, it never says that in dialogue. And if you don't say that in dialogue, the audience doesn't know it. That from the Huffington Post report, this is what the original pilot version of the Jamie Cersei sex scene looked like. Um... They were both naked in the original version, because, but not in the finished version, because um, Lena Headey was actually pregnant at the time. They wanted to hide that as best they could. So in, in the book and in the pilot, it's they're both naked in a tower having sex together. Uh, the naked man grabs her by the hair and forces her to rise on all fours. She gasps with pain, says, stop. He doesn't, leans in to thrust into her. And then it starts saying in the descriptions that, no, she's really into it, that she's moaning in pleasure that she's not pushing him away, but leaning in. And this is exactly what happened in that season four scene, that you it didn't occur to you how weird and it, it looks, people would mistake it for rape, that, oh no, I'm having them say in dialogue, uh, no, stop, but the, it, it's the subtext I'm writing, and you weren't smart enough to pick up on that, that she's leaning in. Well, then you got to make damn sure that the camera zooms in on her hand, grabbing him and leaning in for a kiss. That you didn't make that clear, either in dialogue or visually. You can't blame the audience for not picking up on that. You are a bad screenwriter. You are not conveying information. So just, I'm not the first one to say this, Huffington Post said, Look at this description. It looks exactly like the same issues from season four. It, Benioff and Weiss were bad at exposition in a visual medium. Not just, that, oh, Cersei is his sister, but all sorts of other things that were not clear in the pilot because they were in the scene descriptions and not the dialogue. And this should be no surprise. They had no prior TV experience and no training They were unqualified in basic skills. They are two novelists who moonlighted as script doctors and basically approached this like a novel. And in a novel, you can go on for a paragraph aside, looking into a character's head, seeing their thoughts. You can't do that in a visual medium. And just the whole point of the earlier sections of of this I'm making, that TV doesn't work like that. That is a skill that you can't just give a paragraph description in the set directions going, and this is Jamie's brother, he has a good relationship with him, but not with Cersei. That's for the actors, yes. The script is about conveying this to the audience through what's on screen and dialogue. We shouldn't be surprised. They had no prior experience or training. So they wrote a Jamie-Cersei sex scene for the pilot, so confusing it seemed like rape, that apparently someone, maybe them, probably someone else, given what happened later, had to pressure them to rewrite it, that at some point this was rewritten and turned into the more consensual-looking thing in Season 1, Episode 1, Winter is Coming. And then they did the exact same thing in Season 4. I don't mean this just accusingly, but what happened? What is going on? These are the facts. What happened? Some people are, again, rationalizing and making up excuses because this has turned into a cult or abusive relationship, where, as I was saying in the previous section on Catalan, that you make up excuses. Like I'm thinking like Scientology, people saying, I was part of it, and I drank the Kool-Aid, and I just kept thinking up, it must be because of this, not even a theory anymore. But... This is important, and really focus on this in the comments. What I'm trying to drive at, what I've been trying to do with my whole channel, is even their critics, others make angry assumptions that they're mustache-twirling villains with a grand agenda of calculated misogyny. And 
that hasn't achieved anything in seven years. It wouldn't. Without evidence, that doesn't have much impact either. You're saying, they're hacks and they write women badly. You need to give examples of, well, actually, they have no screenwriting training, that their exposition is terrible. What happened was, from them not giving interviews, like, oh, this Jamie Sirs, that's what hit me more than anything, that after that happened, the beginning of season four, 2014, they just didn't give an interview until season five started. And what were we going to that the media wasn't pressuring HBO at other events? They need, if they're not physically here, why aren't they here answering these questions? And then they would start like skipping Comic Con by season five to avoid rape questions. Just pressure HBO to get them to make a statement. But not just in, okay, those are media outlets as individuals, as just people online, on Twitter, on YouTube. They reached a point where they taught us to stop asking questions. I remember thinking we were owed an explanation of, like, why is Jane Westerling Talissa now in season two? By season five and definitely season six, there aren't questions anymore. You see, it's the tone of the overall culture shifted to reactions. Like a goddamn Facebook liking or hitting dislike on something. That they're not asking, you know, evidence-based, well, this is what happened here, but did you like that or not? Did you like that Duran Martell got killed or not? Just why is this happening? We got taught that we're never going to get an answer. And while, yes, that did help keep the cult going of the hype machine, it also, in many ways, crippled people who were trying to criticize them. Because if all you can say is they're bad, without we don't have enough evidence behind the scenes to, you know, high-level defections of people saying these guys are crazy people who don't know how to write, they won't have impact. What we need is evidence-based research, a return to that world. Cited, confirmed proof of basic incompetence is far more impactful than unprovable claims that they have some evil agenda. Nothing changes that way. And this isn't, oh, they owe us. Like Star Wars, we know about multiple draft revisions of which writer wanted which thing at different stages in production. It's, why is this happening with Jamie and Cersei? Because it happened. Not, oh, well, Benioff said this, but Weiss argued for this other thing, and then Cogman suggested this third thing, we kind of combined them, and then we went through phase two. That is what I mean when I say, why is this happening? The what was the discussion? Was there a discussion, or is it just people do what Benioff tells them, that there is no writer's room? That I really think Weiss and Cogman are just yes-men, and if Benioff was asked, well, why did you do this? Well, that would lead to criticism if he told you his step-by-step, -step. so it's just because I felt like it. I, I don't know, but we need to be trying to get evidence instead of just making up theories, and not even theories, and just going, this is a fact. It must have been because of this. And that is the real problem, that we stopped pressuring them for, you need to give us answers to these things. So, question, why did they make another Jamie Searcy sex scene without clear verbal or visual consent for season four, when they already made this mistake in the pilot and were apparently made to correct it. I don't think they corrected it on their own if they then went and did the same thing by season four. That I think Martin or someone else told them that this isn't clear, you need to rewrite it. Well, what are logical scenarios, and then we eliminate the scenarios. These are things that could have happened, I don't know if they did. The first one, not necessarily true and most damaging, is that Wow, they arrogantly wanted to prove wrong whoever complained during the pilot by reusing that idea. That oh, Martin said this was not a well-written thing, but I think it's cool and edgy that she's shouting no, even as we see her pulling him in. When, even if you're going to do that, which you probably shouldn't, you need to make sure the camera is zooming in on her kissing him, showing that her physical motions are consensual, if you're going to do something really complicated like that that they kind of wanted to prove their critics of the pilot wrong by reusing it, only for it to fail exactly as warned. And if that sounds weird, that's what happened with Breaker of Chains script, that the Jamie actor, Nikolai, was on set warning them, 
this sort of looks non-consensual. Are you sure you're filming it right? Out of pride, I guess, they didn't listen to him. Oh, how dare you tell us that we no don't know our jobs? And then it failed exactly as he warned them it would. What if basically the same thing happened with, with Martin or someone warned them, this looks weird, don't do it, and then they later did it again to prove them wrong? That is only one possibility, though. A second scenario, just as likely, is that maybe Benioff and Weiss are so oblivious that they just plain forgot the warning from the pilot. And they've demonstrated themselves to be oblivious and forgetful on other details and other matters with the TV show. And this isn't any more forgivable. It's just being incompetent in a different way. That I kind of think of it in terms of, like, in the books, if Tyrion warned Joffrey, stop publicly shooting peasants with a crossbow, it makes you look bad, it's against your own interests to do that. And then a couple of months later in the story, Joffrey was doing it again, he's shooting peasants with a crossbow. But just from his characterization, you know, it's equally likely that maybe he did that to spite Tyrion, or maybe he did that because he's just playing such a creature of impulse, so impulsive that he forgets any warnings he's given. I think about it like, you know, small children. You know, when you're trying to babysit small children, hey, don't play with that fragile glass thing, it could break. And sometimes they'll go and play with it anyway because they're annoyed you told them not to. Other times, they'll just plain forget because it's so, wow, look at that shiny thing, that it's so, it's such an impulse for them that they don't remember your warnings. Just thinking of real-life examples that, yeah, it's equally possible they just forgot warnings they were given because they've forgotten other warnings they were given on logistics and things. And it's, it's that fundamental question of, are you doing this because you, you're arrogantly prideful enough you think you know better, or because your mind can't process warnings? It, it could be either one, I don't know. Um, a third possibility that does occur to me, it, which not impossible, maybe no one warned them from the pilot to season one version. That might be an assumption, you know, it's different, therefore someone must have warned them. Maybe the cast and director went behind their back to change the episode one sex scene different from the pilot. Maybe on their own, Lena and Nikolai worked out with the director, we should do this differently. And this wouldn't be the first instance of people going behind their back. That's why it occurs to me if we've had, like, Sapochnik saying... There's points when I, I would just leave out scenes that were unfilmable, that they they refused when I told them this is unfilmable. I would just not do it and wait until the clock ran out. Other things like that of people who are, they're bad bosses who don't know what they're doing and aren't listening to their department heads, and increasingly people are going around their backs. It's that old banal story of that. Of, so maybe no one told them that they filmed the first episode differently. But I think that's implausible because it was under such scrutiny at the time, and, you know, because it's the first episode. You know, maybe it's, well, then the season four director filmed it as written, but it's possible someone went behind their backs. I really, really doubt that. Uh, it's either they did it, it's exactly the same thing. Cersei shouting no while uh, while consensually pulling him closer and, and, and doing stuff to him, so... Either they did this as a take that of, well, we can do it, and even then it's, maybe they're doing it as a, well, we can do it right, they were wrong to criticize us, not necessarily negative, or they forgot, I don't know. Suggest another reason in the comments of, why did you do the exact same thing again when apparently it was dropped from the pilot to main version of Winter is Coming? 